And so this song talks about rattle. Hear the sound of dry bones rattling. And so what we are experiencing and what we want from the Lord is that the dry places in our life, the places that are death, the places that stink to high heavens, that we don't even smell it anymore, that we begin as Christ's followers to speak life into those places, to ask the Lord to do something new, to make a graveyard turn into a garden. And so, God, we are believing that today as we sing and we worship you, God. We are believing what we sing. We speak it out in faith that we are hearing the dry bones rattle in our lives, in our friends' lives, in our families' lives. Oh, God, may it be so. We're believing you for the impossible. Come on, lift your voices. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We want to hear the sound of life today, the sound of joy today. There's joy in this house. I am so excited. I love Iron Man and Batman so much, and I couldn't make up my mind which socks to wear today. So I wore both of them. <laughs> I may be new to following Christ, but the rest of this passage says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just to be there as simply and honestly as you can manage, the focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father that you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. That's what I choose to do. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good? So I have to tell you, I uh, had to pick my wife up at the airport this morning, like after midnight, and got settled really late, and so I'm really tired, and I think Sarah has it going on this morning, so I'm just going to ask Sarah to come up and preach. Are you guys good with that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, you know what? Honestly, as we were finishing that last song, I was like, what a great morning. I'm like, I don't know if I can come and say anything and add to what has already taken place this morning. So all of us have expectations, right? And you know, when somebody promises something, you expect that they're going to deliver. A am I right? But the question that I would ask you is, what do people expect of you? When people think of you, what do they expect? When people think of DC3, what do they expect? Do they people shouldn't be relieved when you walk out of the room. And so the question is, what kind of expectations should people have of you? What kind of expectations should people have of me? And really, what kind of expectations should people have of those that call themselves followers of Christ? Internal transformation always produces external action. Internal transformation always produces external action. And so
And so if you have given your life to Christ and become a follower of Christ, your eternity has changed and your heart has changed. If your heart changes, then your head should change and what your hands and feet do should change also. I think we all know this to be true, but we don't always like to admit it. But whatever you believe affects your behavior. Listen to what Philippians 2 says about that. Verse 3, Paul's writing and he says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And so... Brian already referenced it in the welcome, and we do it every week, Mark chapter 12. Jesus says, love God and love people, right? What model do we follow to know how to love our neighbor as ourself? We do what Jesus did for us. Dave Shaw, a friend, a vet, a family member. Here's what we know. Dave, who needed a little help that month, would have no idea what really happens when people who love him put their faith into action. I'm the same God in Guatemala that I am in Florida. I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he, this is our mission field. You don't have to sell everything and move to a foreign land to be a missionary. You're a missionary. All of us are missionaries because we have a calling on our lives. He was sharing a story of a lady, her name was Nell, and at 66 years old, Nell realized that she had never shared Jesus with anybody. The number of names in that book, from age 66 to 79, Nell led 3,176 people to Jesus. <laughs> 